Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1. Recognized, Matthew Bordnave, 0, 0, 4. Hello team. Today we are still out of the watchtower after having zated to Burbank, California. We are speaking currently with Matthew Bordnave, storyboard artist for more projects than I can easily list, including Flashpoint Paradox, Justice League Dark, DC Super Friends, Gotham by Gaslight, Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay, and of course, Young Justice. Matt is also an active participant in Hashtag Lunchbag, a volunteer organization supporting the homeless in Los Angeles. Matt, welcome to Whelmed. Thanks. Thanks for having me on board. Before we begin, as always, I want to remind everyone that our discussion episodes draw on anything and everything related to Young Justice, including both seasons of the series so far, the comics, and the video game. If you've not seen, read, or played all of the material and are spoiler wary, please consider this your warning. We will also only be discussing Young Justice Season 3 in the context of what's been released so far, so the standard Weissman Vietti hashtag no spoilers protocol is still in effect as of last week. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, with all that out of the way, let's dive in. Um, but, so before we get to the meat of what we're going to talk about in today's chat, I want to hear a little bit more about who you are and what you do in the world, how you got into uh, this storyboarding thing. We want to hear your origin story. Okay, that's fair. Um, my origin story started, uh, I would say this, when I was 17, I was visiting my brother. He went to LMU. His roommate, Gary, was an animation major. Oh. So when I went to go visit my brother, he, Gary was like, hey, my brother told me that you could draw. And I was like, yeah. And he like pulled out a sheet of paper and just slapped it down in front of me. He was <laughs> like, draw Ninja Turtle. And I was like, all right. And he's like, oh, you can. And he's like, have you ever thought about working animation? And I was like, no, not really. And he was like, I think you should. And he's like, our teacher here works on Teen Titans, works on Justice League. And I was a huge fan of Teen so Titans. 17, you were just graduating high school, right? Yeah. And you were just, okay, <laughs> wow, all right. We literally walked into this career. I, yeah, yeah. And, and that, I think that summer, well, I remember Batman the Enemy series came out on a box set. And I remember being Best Buy with my dad. And I was like, hey, can I get this? And he was like, sure. And I remember watching it and behind the scene feature and they showed storyboards. And I was like, there, there it is. That's right. something I think I can do. Right, right. And then when I would go visit my brother, I'd ask Gary, like, hey, I'd ask him animation questions and stuff like that. And another, another um, friend of mine that I've known since, like, forever, like, legit preschool, he was an animation major, too, and I'd bug him and ask him questions and stuff. And so I was like... But only after the trigger had been pulled when you were 17 and talking to this roommate of your brother's? Yeah, well, I knew I wanted to draw. And the, I, I was like, how can I draw for a living? Right. What's the best way of doing that? There's comics. Yep. Yep. And I didn't really think about animation until I had met Gary. And until I saw what a storyboard artist was while watching that, that BTAS DVD. And I was like, I think I can do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it, originally I was, when I was thinking about college and what I wanted to do, I wasn't even thinking about art. I was just like, hey, if I get into this, I want to study cognitive therapy. I want to study, oh, yeah. you know, I wasn't even thinking. And, and Gary kind of helped push me in that direction. So that that so you had so you wanted to go into psychology? I did for a moment. Like for a, <laughs> for a breath there. For a breath and then I realized the closer I was getting to graduating, I was like I can't be in school for longer than 4 years again. Like I just yeah, yeah. I was like and then I I was like you know what I just like drawing. How can I draw for a living? What's what's the best avenue where I can do that? Right, right. So how did okay, so now I got it that's not the answer I was expecting. I was like, "Oh, since I was 4 years old, no, that's not what happened. So I want to dive into this for sure because Brandon and Phil last week got started to get into them going like, yeah, I could storyboard, I guess. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means. It sounds like just even watching the Batman the Animated Series thing, you knew more than they did before they walked into doing storyboard. I, I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they, didn't, they may not have had that option back in the day. Uh -huh. But um, so your 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 brother's friend said you should do a, you should get into doing some animation and storyboard art art. Well, just and animation, then, yeah. Just animation. Yeah. He was just saying animation. Did yeah. he talk about storyboarding specifically? It sounds like he did, right? But no, because at the time um, the storyboard class he didn't take that until his junior year. Okay, so he hadn't got he hadn't seen storyboarding. Yeah. He was in there for animation yes. himself. Gotcha, gotcha. And, and this was LMU, you said. Yeah, and okay. and now, uh, funny enough, he is a producer in WB Games. He works right across from me. 
So oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh my God. Is he proud? Yeah. I, he I, is. All I can think of is like, I did that. That's that's to be like, I helped him do that. Yeah. I, I've seen some cool stuff that he's been working on over there when I go visit him, but, but our schedules are so busy, so we can't always. Okay. So let's see what the next step is. So you have somebody tell you, yeah, you can draw. Yeah. I think you should do this thing. Uh -huh. Okay. So say one of our listeners has that happen to them. Like what, what's the next thing? Like, you went, you got into college, you got into somewhere to study art. Yes. So you had that going on. Yeah. So how did you get, how did you end up working on all these, this list of stuff you <laughs> sent me is ridiculous. <laughs> You've worked on crazy stuff from Scooby-Doo to Gotham by Gaslight to Suicide Squad. Like, I need the story. Tell me the story. Uh, luck, I guess. I don't know. I don't. Um... I don't believe in luck. <laughs> I, believe, I, believe, I believe in participating. You participate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you show I, up. I just showed up. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, I knew when I got in, so when I was animation major, it was like, do you want to animate? And, and I was like, man, animation is kind of tough. Like, what else is there? And then there's storyboarding. And then I was like, okay, let me, let me, I think I can do this. And, and then from there, I knew I wanted to do action. I wanted to work on action shows. Cause I, like everybody, I was a fan of Batman anime series, right, you know, right. and, and I grew up reading comics. Um, and so I knew I wanted to do that. So what's the best way? And, and thankfully our storyboard teacher, Jay Leva was working on Teen Titans, or Justice League, or all these stuff. And him and uh, my 3D teacher, Kathy Bauer, helped me get an internship at Marvel Lionsgate. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Did you just toss like Jay's name out? Yeah. Like, you just name drop Jay Leva? Just, like, like, yeah. Yeah, you're just like, yeah, well, you know, this is, you know, let's have a lunch with him one day. Like, okay, where did that come from? So, like, you don't go from just a general student. You don't just go from a student studying animation to like, oh, Jay got me a job. Like, how does this happen? He was our, so Jay went to LMU. Okay. And he was our storyboard professor. Okay. And oh yeah. Okay. He's still teaching there now. I think he said this is his 20th, 20th plus year. So he's still there teaching what? at that school. Yeah. And so um, while I was there, like I said, him and Kathy Bauer helped me get an internship at Marvel Whoa. Lionsgate, and I think that set me on that path, and that's where I got to meet people, ask questions about how I can go about doing this, how should I create my portfolio, what do I need to do, what do I need to well, study? I mean, he's, yes, <laughs> right? You're going to ask him how to make this happen. Yeah. How difficult, sorry, I'm having to catch up with this. <laughs> so, you, so you went to LMU, which is where your brother's friend was going. Yes. Is this a difficult animation program to get into? It was, it's weird because... Does anybody know he <laughs> works there? No, see, like, at the time he was just Jay, and now he's, he's Jay Leva. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, I've been mispronouncing his name this whole time. Thank you for correcting it, it's me. It's all right. Every, everyone Oliva. tends to. Oh, yeah. Oliva. And, um, okay, yeah, and so... He's so good. He's, he's one of the best action people we have in our industry. And, and so, yeah, while I was there, I would bug him all the time. You know, yeah, I'd be yeah. like... Hey, I watched the show and, you know, we'd sit down and, and we'd talk. Like break it down? Yeah. Like say, this is what I was seeing. This is how I, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So the part where you were talking about luck, the part you were talking about luck, yeah. this is where that part goes away <laughs> because you showed up. I right? showed up. Yeah. You showed up. You, you were curious. You asked questions. Mm -hmm. You participated. You did it with respect with the person who had a skill. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's hopefully, that's a skill I'm hoping like people who are listening to us can take away with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be there. Be present. Right. And it sounds like, God, I wish I would fly on that room <laughs> wall, but okay, go ahead. Yeah. And so I'd always, you know, um, I'd always bug him. I'd always show him some things. I'd always talk to him and I just kept in contact with him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot. And I, I met Phil when I was interning at Marvel Lionsgate too. Phil Barassa. Phil Barassa, yeah, because he was the character designer on um, the Thor project they were doing, Thor Tells of Asgard and Planet Hulk. He was, yeah. I was there, I was interning at the time. And if you look at those credits, it's very funny to me because you'll see Brandon Vietti, Phil Barassa. You'll see a lot of people in there that you're like, oh, they went to Warner Brothers and worked on this other stuff. Right, right, right. right you'll right. see those names in there. Um, and so, you know, I kept in, I just kept in contact with these guys. They always gave me good advice and an opportunity came up where they had an opening and and from there I just had to come in I had to show up do my job the right way and and just try to stay afloat yeah you yeah. know so that's that's how it happened dude that's fantastic all right so let's take a step back a little bit so okay two things so one you told me before we started recording you didn't work on season one of Young Justice no I didn't so I get to ask you this question <laughs> that I do not get to ask some people who work on the show which uh -huh. is when was the first time you saw Young Justice I, I was, at the time, I didn't know it was Young Justice, and I was ha coming by to visit Phil and have lunch, and 
I remember walking in into the bullpen that he worked in at the time, and I saw him drawing some stuff. What he was working on that I, I did also that I didn't realize he was doing the DC Nation or not the DC uh, the DC Showcase. He oh was, right. Yeah, he was working on the Jonah Hex. I remember looking at those designs, and I, so I was like, "Whoa!" Like I remember seeing like here's a drawing of Robin, and I didn't know that was Miss Martian. And and then it's like here's Robin under Batman. Here's a Batman, and, and I was like, "What's going what on?" What is this project? Yeah, yeah, and and he didn't say what it was. And at the time, I was like, "This looks cool. What is this? When's this coming out?" And come to find out, that was Young Justice. That's what he was he was working on. It's top secret at the time, and he's right. like. You know, I can't answer these questions, you know? <laughs> wow, so you, I mean, okay, I guess I guess it makes sense, but you're literally working in the same area. Yeah. And he can't talk to you about yeah. it. Yeah. And I was still, I, either I was a student or I graduated at the time, I can't remember, but yeah, he couldn't, couldn't talk about it, but I remember looking at it and, right. and just being like, man, this is really cool, I can't wait to. So then I, had, then I need to know then, so you saw it before, while it was still in development, yeah. right? To the point where he was just doing character designs, yes. right? Yeah. So did you find out kind of what it was and what it was all about before it aired? Or did you go, oh, I recognize this Dick Grayson. <laughs> is that what it was? I think a little bit of both, because he still didn't, he didn't say, but I was at Comic-Con when they had, and, and I was like, yeah. oh, you yeah. know. Like, I, was, I was there as well. <laughs> yeah, and it blew me, I mean, it blew me away. And I was like, man, this is really good. I remember like, Messaging like I'm so excited! I can't wait to see that this is is gonna be like that new thing that's gonna inspire people, you right, know. Right. And so you so you watched the first season, yeah, just like a fan. I did. So what was at the time? I think I applied. I'm not sure, but I remember I was working in Northridge, and I remember trying to rush home to LA. I live near downtown LA, and I remember just like I gotta get home in time yeah, yeah. to watch this show. Nice. And I remember, I think they aired like what at seven? Was it like I, I bought it on digital? So <laughs> oh, it, whenever okay. it came out, it came out, and the, and the release schedule was all over the place. And they they aired Independence Day Part One and Two in November, and okay. then they didn't air the rest of the episodes again until like four months later. Yeah, and it was kind of a it was kind of a mess on that front. So it was tough to I don't even know when their regular release schedule was. Yeah, okay. So again, how did you get into, so you worked on season two? I did work on season two. Um, how did you get into that job then? I was still cool, I knew, um, I'm still cool with the people that worked on the show. Right. Uh, and James Peters was someone who was also for Marvel Alliance Gate. And I remember just texting him one time, we still kept in contact. Uh -huh. And he hit me up and he said, hey, I have a position open, would you love? to come join us on Young Justice. And I was like, I, I would love to. Like, you didn't even finish the sentence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. And I remember I was at the time I was at, I was um, QA analysis uh, at Naughty Dog for Uncharted 3. And I just, in that same week, just remember having lunch about- Hold on, you were a QA, you were a quality control analyst for- Uncharted 3. Uncharted 3, <laughs> yeah. okay. At the time, in that, in that same week, I remember um, we had a lunch and they were talking about the next project, which was Last of Us. And I remember like, hey, this is what's next, just to let you guys know. And, and I was like, this sounds cool. And then, then Young Justice happened. And there was this moment of like, do I stay for this? You know? And yeah. yeah. And so I just, I was like, you know, animation is what I want to do. So I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I have some questions. You're going to have to, I mean, I know so little about storyboarding except okay. for just stuff I've seen on like, you know, Star Wars from back in the day. Yeah. Seeing like, oh, well, they drew this out first. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess that kind of makes sense. You got to plan these things out. Yeah. Video games need storyboards? Yeah, definitely, especially for the cinematic. But I, I wasn't, I was not doing any art related stuff at the time. It okay. was just more of like, find the bugs, can you crash the game, and, and stuff like that. But have you done video, have you done storyboarding for video games or just for animation? Just for animation. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So you left there doing that. You, you picked up this job doing Young Justice season two. Yeah, season two, I came in as uh, ink and paint. So I was helping out the color team with that. And at. Okay, you're going to have to dive into that. So okay. I picture a storyboard as a black and white sketch of yeah. where's the camera angle and how's things going. You just use the word ink and paint. Well, so yeah. what does that mean? So ink and, ink and paint is, it has nothing to do with boarding. And okay. so it is, you'll get the models. You'll be like, what is this character? How are we going to paint this character? What lighting conditions or color settings are we going to put this character in? Like, and, and it's just kind of doing that. And, and like, oh, here's the effects. What are these effects going to look like? How are we going to color and how are we going to paint these effects? And, Interesting. So I started off as, as a painter, which is like essentially the first job, like you kind of get in animation back in the day, at least, you know, you painter. You Your first job it. was on Young Justice season yeah, two. It was. And wow. um, when we were wrapping up, 
That's worked out for you. Yeah. <laughs> when we were wrapping up, Jay was directing Flashpoint. And I, you know, I went to Jay and I was like, hey man, I'm, I'm wrapping up. You need a revisionist. Cause that's, if you're gonna go to boards, you start on revisions first and then you work your way up to boards then it's directing, then supervising directing, then it's producer. And, and so he was like, yeah, I might need somebody. I'll let you know. And then for two months I was just like, you know, drawing, working on my stuff. And then I got a call. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, are you available to come in to work on Flashpoint? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And and so. The answer is always yes. Yeah, always. So then I got the call and I came in and then just, like I said, just showed up, tried to do my job the best of my abilities and, and just try to just be the artist that they needed me to be. Yeah, yeah. And then try to work my way up to right. be a story artist. Okay, so so going back again, we keep jumping back a little bit, but what was your history with, I mean, you clearly did art. Yeah. Right? And your the, your brother's friend saw immediately that you had some talent yeah. to do some stuff. Where was where this love? Like you had a love for comics, you had a love for animation, like DC, Marvel. Like where where was your experience with these characters before you saw Young Justice or before you worked on them? I had a um a love for drawing and comics, and then the the weird thing was so I have two older brothers, Chris and Brandon, and they always drew. And I just thought that was the thing. I just thought everyone drew, drew and played Street Fighter. Like, I just thought that was the thing <laughs> until I went to kindergarten. And so I remember the day my brother bought Jim Lee's X-Men 1. And I remember just opening that page. And it blew my mind. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I remember just flipping through that comic over and over and over again and just wanting to draw like Jim Lee. And, and anything he drew, I'd pick up and read. And... I've always had a love for cartoons because I it was you know you, you know when you watch sixties Batman and Robin and they had that animated intro yeah, yeah. and you're always uh -huh. like I, I remember as a kid just being like okay so when's the animation gonna come back yeah, no, right <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. where's this show yeah. right right and and so I've always was always watching cartoons and and you know just like you know like B Taz when B Taz hit when X Men hit and you're like this stuff is great you know and I've always loved watching anything that was animated right. you know whether that's you know um, American made Japanese. I started watching Last Man, which is French. Yeah. Uh, I love that show too. And just, I just, like I said, I just wanted to draw. And I thought, man, animation is perfect. I get to draw and I get to make cartoons. And then, you know, working at Warner Brothers, like, man, I can make cartoons and I can make comic related cartoons too. Right, like, right. So your brothers, do they, do they do anything now with the art? Is that just something that they enjoy doing or are they doing it professionally now? Yeah, my brother Brandon is a um, senior graphic designer at Complex Media. Oh, wow. So he's he's still sticking with art. Um, this is a family gig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, my other brother Chris stopped drawing, but he was really good. they were both really good. And and so Chris had stopped drawing, and now he works at different Brennan law firm uh, out here in, in Los Angeles. So, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So let's talk about the storyboarding process a little bit. Let's dive into this because one of the things that Brandon and Phil started diving into, I, I mentioned beforehand, when they said, "Well, now we're going to start doing storyboarding." Brendan said something to the effect of uh, it, it was just like a nightmare of speed with storyboarding. And I'm like, okay, there's so many questions. I don't know how this works at all. Uh -huh. And we didn't get into as much of the process of the animation process with them as I would like to do. Would yeah. like to. We're going to do that another time. Okay. But I want to talk about this. So what I'm going to tell you what I know is a complete layman, uh -huh. and then you're going to fix me. Okay. Okay. So a storyboard for me is this idea that it's like, this is the scene. We're doing a scene point, you know, scene starts at A, you know, has a beginning, middle and end, not an episode, but a scene. Mm -hmm. And so what we want, we're going to have these characters in the scene. We want these certain angles going on. Yeah. Right. And, and somebody draws that out so they can visualize it instead of just carrying an entire movie or a TV series or whatever in their head. Yes. Is that kind of correct? I, I it sounds super simplistic. Like I just took your job and made it overly simplistic you know what i feel like if jay was listening he'd fail me because that was what he had tested us on he we'd have to, to be able to define what a storyboard artist was on all our tests and, and it was like visual you know it's the visual development or the visual sequence of a script yeah I, and if you heard it he'd be like f like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like that's not what i taught you um but yeah it's like you're you're taking the script and and then you know putting it to visual so people can understand what's happening. So someone is handing somebody so so Greg writes an episode. Yes. He writes the episode out. He yeah. has he has, you know, movie style, TV style prompts, you know, like in, indoors, 
this person's apartment, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then he hands that script. You get a copy of that script. Yeah. Right? Yes. He comes by, personally hands you the script. And then you get the script and you look at it. And, and then you storyboard off of the script. Yes. To try to visualize what's happening. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes we have meetings. So we'll, we'll have a handout meeting. So we'll be the, our storyboard team. A handout meeting? Is that what you said? Yeah, that's what okay, it's Okay, okay. And, and Just getting the lingo. Okay. And Greg and Brandon will be in there. Our director will be in there. And they'll, we'll, we'll read the script. They'll tell us what they what their intentions are. What um, Okay. Where before you storyboard. Yes, before. Okay, gotcha. Just to give us guidance and direction gotcha. of how to handle it. And then, you know, they'll, sometimes some scripts have notes. They're like, on this scene, we want you to, to truck in. All right, okay. this thing we want to truck out. We want you to pan over. You know, there might be some just descriptions in there. Uh, and so they, they go over that, and then we sit down and we thumbnail out just to give an insight. We, you know, you lay out all the ideas. While they're, while they're talking. You can. Okay. But or afterwards, you know, you read the script four to five times, thumbnail your stuff out. Okay. You know, and then we'll rough it out, you know, because in, in the thumbnail phase, you can see what works and what doesn't. And the thumbnail is just, you know, some chicken scratch drawings and some stuff. Of, right. of the sequence. It'd be chicken scratch for me. It's probably <laughs> really nice for you. Sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and then and then we'll we'll rough it out. Uh, our directors will look at it along with our producers. So Brandon will be in the room, Greg will be in the room and they'll you know, they'll go like, All right, I was thinking of something like this. I think we need to do something like this. Okay. And and that's when we're when we turn in our roughs, that's when we're in the problem solving phase. Okay. And we get to see what works and what doesn't, and what needs to be better, what needs to be improved upon for certain episodes. Okay. And then we'll get our notes, and then after our round of notes, we'll go into the cleanup and revision phase where you know, we'll polish them. That's the, you know, when you see storyboards online, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing the cleanup and finished versions. Okay. And, and then we'll do that. And then even after that, there's another round of revisions where they'll watch it, they'll put it in an animatic format where it, it plays. Yeah, like I animated. gotcha. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and they'll go, okay, we need to address this, we need to fix this. And that's when it goes to the revisionist. And that was my job prior in, um, to being a storyboard artist. And they'll have the notes and they'll go, all right, this is what we need for this scene. This is what right. we need to fix here. And then it's a team effort. So they, take, so they take those shots that look like a comic, yeah. right? And they, they, they put it up in animatics, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not animated, obviously, but it's, it's how do I put this? You got to excuse my terminology. Okay. It's basically like taking a flip book of it. You're like looking at it so that they can see like, oh, that's jarring. That was that did not we did not intend that transition to be as jarring as it was. Yeah. It's obviously not carrying the emotion we want or whatever. And let's fix that. Is yeah. that what you mean by like doing the revisions off of off of after that? We'll we'll look at a scene, so it's we'll draw sequences out and we'll pose them out and and then we'll watch it. And it just looks like a rough cut of animation without okay. key it looks like keyframe animation. Without keyframe animation, yeah. what does that mean? So it's just the key, like the key points of a movement. So okay. Like, yeah, you won't. Got it. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Like if I was to like grab a cup, it's just like here's my hand in the standard pose, and the next, and your hand's on the cup now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So keyframe like animation. Okay. Got it. Um, and so then when they're watching the animatic, that's when you get to see again how. All right. So how's this episode playing out? May, does this work for the scene? Do we need to change the scene? Because this idea that we've had needs to be present. And I'm kind of being vague, but it's just like, all right, what if for the sake of story, it's like, all right, in this scene, this person's really emotional about this, this thing. And they watch it and it's like, is it reading that this person's being emotional about this? Yeah. And it's no, okay, then we need to rework this. Right, right. And so stuff like that. Um, so when you, so, so you finish the storyboardings for an episode, mm -hmm. right? So to get, what, what did you work on every episode of season two? Um, for, for season for season three, I, I was the storyboard artist, and so we, we have two team. We have my bad. We have three teams, and that's split up. So you don't do every you do probably like ten episodes or nine episodes. I forget the count. Okay, so like a third. Of yeah, episodes, you do a third. Right? Yeah. Okay, so you work. So on season two, how many did you work on? It's about the same. Well, well there was twenty episodes. So. In season two, since I was ink and paint, I did every episode. So you did every episode, but only ink and paint. Yes. Storyboarding on season three. Yes. Okay. So we can't talk about a. I wanted to talk about a specific episode if we could, but we can't for season two because I still would get the the storyboards, and I have to flip through the storyboards, and sometimes I'll catch something where like, hey, we need this model to paint. Got like, you. Oh, like if Robin's kicking someone in the face, we need um, a shoe model where we can see the uh, bottom of the shoe and we need to paint that. And so I would still flip through. So okay. Yeah. So let's do this then. Pick, 
can you do you have any like particular episode or, or some situation that came up that jumps out at you like this was an interesting storyboard related thing if not i will just pick one of my favorite episodes pick, pick one of your favorites uh, pick, 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 pick pick an episode from season well there's an episode where we find out um aqualad didn't really kill artemis Oh well, well oh, yeah, that yeah, that yeah, episode, yeah, yeah, just yeah. in general, that episode. No, is one that's, of my favorites. That, let's do that. Right, okay. so we have the big reveal. Right? Yeah, so you got the flashbacks and what really happened, the whole deal. Yeah, let's yeah. do that episode because there's a lot of stuff going on in that episode, obviously, and particularly with storyboarding, you're having to focus on the idea of how are we going to show Aqualad stabbing Artemis yeah. from one perspective. Yeah, and make sure that everything works. Like, where's her hand? Yeah, how's her hand going to be in the next? You know, and then having the flashback, where's Nightwing's hand going to be? Where's the blood packet going to be? Those kinds of things, mm -hmm. right? So how, so, so you, you storyboard that out and then you hand it to who? Like, what is the next step after storyboarding? Is the storyboarding used, you, you were just mentioning that with, with, you say paint and ink? Is that what you call ink, it? Ink and paint. Ink yeah. and paint. So you're getting some of the storyboarding, right? You're looking through that yeah. for doing that job. Does that storyboard like go with the anim animation and the script and the audio and everything overseas to the animators as well? Yeah. So they will um, scene the scene gets boarded out after it's done, getting its revisions and final set of revisions. They send they send the boards overseas along with animatic, along with the timing sheets, along with the audio files, and and they're the, basically blueprints and the guideline for the animators. And and they're just like this is what we want. Right. Uh, this is how we want the scenes to be looked, along with other designs too. And then they'll they'll animate everything, and and they send it back over here, and we do post production work. That part of it just seems so strange to me. Like you're taking, you guys do all this pre production work, and then you're handing it to people who were never in those meetings. Yeah. <laughs> you're smiling, right? And then you, and you're like, oh, I hope that turns out well. You know, like I hope we communicated that well, right? They they have those meetings with them, you know. So they do before before we ship it, they'll have a meeting with them, and they'll same and it'll be similar to how our handout meetings are okay. as support artists. Okay. And so yeah, <laughs> gotcha. So so let's let's talk a little bit about some of the other projects you worked on too. So like since we can't talk about season three, and so you're talking about like okay, so you did like a third of the episodes yeah. of three, for example. Now let's jump to like say Gotham by Gaslight. Mm -hmm. Right, so you were telling us earlier that there's usually a team of three storyboarders, yeah, and you each do about seven minutes of a thing. So if you have something like Justice League action, yeah, you only need two, a team of two. But if you're doing a twenty-three-ish minute episode of Young Justice, you have a team of three. Yeah, okay. So now you have whatever Crisis on Two Earths, right? Or yeah. Gotham by Gaslight, or Flashpoint Paradox. Yeah, right. So. How does that break down? Do you have a bigger team? Do you just do more work because there's like 10 episodes is still 230 minutes yeah. of a series, but in a movie is shorter than that. So how does that work? I think um, the number for the movies is between six and nine, I believe. And so you have six, six to nine storyboard artists that work on a project and they cut up um, the script by pages. So okay. certain, certain artists will get a certain amount of pages and depending on... So let's, you know, Axie normally has the heavy fight sequences. Okay. And if you have a heavy fight sequence, you might have a smaller page count because you have to deal with that heavy fight sequence. You're not just talking heads. Yeah. I got you. So okay. talking heads normally get a higher page count because right. just... That makes sense in yeah. retrospect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're, so you, I'm a little shocked at the number of people. Yeah. Like, a, I didn't picture a storyboard team until you and I started talking and you were like, oh, you should also talk to our other friends who are also on this team. Yeah, yeah. Like, There's a team? Yeah, yeah. This is a thing? So why, what, do, you, do you have an idea what Brandon was talking about, about speed, like output? Yeah. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Like, you got a team of three people and Brandon's like, oh my God, the speed at which we had to do this. Break that down for me. So you for we have a, a schedule and our schedule is six weeks and it's three weeks uh, rough and three weeks of clean, and so you'll get a script for a single episode. Yeah. Okay. And you'll get the script and you'll get your page, your you know your pages, and um, now you're like, all right, I got three weeks to get this all done. Okay. And that's I think that's what he's referring to at that moment is like, okay, man, what's in this? What's in the script? And you know, for the sake of this podcast, what if it's like, oh. Batman fights Superman. Okay. And and you're like, all right, 
how am I get this done? And right. <laughs> so let's pick up, I, I know this will be a little bit of theory for you, but let's, so season finale, mm -hmm. Young Justice, first season, yeah. fight scene between every mentor and every sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds nightmarish, yeah. right? To lay out. The choreography, that's another thing I want to talk to you about, like, if you know anything about it, like how, when you have a show like, say, Avatar The Last Airbender, mm -hmm. where you have a whole bunch of different kind of fighting styles, or you have a show like Young Justice, where Black Canary's fighting style is so different from Wonder Woman's, yeah. and Batman's got that close in fighting knees and elbows thing <laughs> that's crazy awesome, right? Like, you've got all, and you've got all the Bat family all fighting in one scene along with everybody else. Storyboarding, it's like, what do they write in the script? Like, everybody fights? And then you like break it down, or is it more like specific on choreography and things like that? It, de it depends on the writer, but um, I, there has been a joke where some writers just write, and they fight, or cool stuff happens. <laughs> That's what I'm totally <laughs> picturing that in my head. Yeah. And that has happened before, and they kind of give us free reign. They know, I mean, especially the writers that work for Warner Brothers kind of know that they leave it up to the, the board team to, to handle that, where they're just like, all right, in this moment, these characters fight and they might write some stuff but it's not you don't really have to follow that right and right. and and so and then that's the other thing is when you get those characters you know batman's a ninja so his fighting style is this this character is a brawler so his fighting style is this okay. when you have someone like robin who's acrobatic well dick grayson robin or yeah. nightwing he's you got to play into that and right. and so you try to do that and um so they do they is it a thing where so i'm a nurse in my day job and when i was working in the unit there's always like this idea of like, oh, okay, this patient is X and this nurse is really good with X. Uh -huh. This other patient's Y, this nurse is good with Y. Is it a situation where sometimes they're like going like, oh no, Matt's the guy for this. Like this, this would work. Like we know that you can look at this and, and interpret it and somebody else has their own skill set. Does it end up being like that? It, it depends on who your director is. So sometimes, okay. sometimes yeah, um, it, it'd be like, hey, you know, this person in is really good at action sequences so then they get the action sequence section and 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 that's not always the case um the director probably needs to know you yeah for, for sure and they'll be able to figure out where what you can do as a storyboard artist while you're working with them and then they'll go all right i think this person can do this um act c fight this person can do the act a fight this person can do act b fight but if you're really passionate about it if you know if i got a script and act c fight was like two characters that i love I'd be like, hey, I what think is I this can... phrase you're using? Axie fight? What? Um, so the scripts are normally broken up. So we have Act A and we have Act B and we have Act C. Act C fight. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. I see what you're saying. Yeah. No, not at all. Um, Again, everybody uses their own lingo, so we want to make sure that people who are, who are listening also grasp it. The Act C fight is your climactic. Yeah. It's it's that final fight in Young Justice. Yeah. The season. Yeah, yeah. So then, if, you know, if you're if you're an artist who's passionate about like hey, I think I can hit this out the park. I, yeah. I want to do it. Then you, you approach your director and you let them know, like, this is something that I want to take like, on. Like, I have a vision of what this is. Yeah. Okay, I get this now. I'm starting to get an idea. I really want to know more about choreography too, but I'm gonna, I may have, to, may have to dive into that at a different time, yeah. at some point in time. So from having your first job on Young Justice Season 2, like getting into what you were saying, right? Yeah. To doing, I don't know, what is there, 20 movies and TV series you've worked on since then that seem to have yeah. worked out, out for you, right? Yeah. So are you are you one of the, I mean, do they hire you on a contract basis for a particular thing or are you now like, I don't know what the word is, you're now in the bullpen? Maybe in the bullpen. I kind of just, if I see something, I'll go apply to that or I'll talk to whoever I need to talk to to make sure I get to Gotcha. work on that project gotcha. um, and or you know submit my portfolio some, do you need oh so work. sometimes you need to apply yeah to a thing like hey i want to work on this project and they might say hey we're full or like no you'd be great for this let's do this yeah. but you kind of you're here like i said I, I maybe overuse the word but you're participating you're here you're your face is in the projects you're you're telling them you're telling them the things that are piquing your interest and, yeah and keeping yourself in the business there. Yeah. Are there other things that you're doing as well? Do you only work here with Warner Brothers right now? Or do you do things with other projects as well? Like, are you working with other animation studios on different projects as well? Not this year. Last year, I did some freelance on Marvel Spider-Man. When I was at, I used to work at Tim House at one point, and I was working on multiple projects at once. Okay. So I would do keyframe animation for one project, uh, revisions for another project, okay. and, and, and 
if something else came my way while I was at You're just wearing a bunch of hats yeah. and you're doing a bunch of stuff, yeah. getting to be really good. Is there another, is there a next step for you? Like is storyboarding a thing that people go into and they're like, I do this and this is my thing, right? Yeah. Or is it something you do? Like you were saying, like ink and paint is what you do to get into storyboarding and well, then you, to get into the thing. Uh, um, so ink and paint is not for storyboarding. It's uh, I did ink and paint and then the next step for that is color stylist or you could be BG painter. So that... What's BG painter? Uh, background painter. My background bad. painter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, Sorry, I misheard you. Yeah, so it's it's all good. Uh, for storyboarding, you you do story you do revisions. Revisions. That's yeah. what you were telling me. Yeah. I'm sorry. So it's revisions, and then you get into the, the storyboarding. Stuff. Yeah. But it sounds like you've got your you're just doing you're learning everything you possibly can at, at all times. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. And where do you want to, do you want to go into doing? Do you want to follow Jay's lead? <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask. He was teaching your storyboarding class. <laughs> I, you know, a if he needs someone to come in and teach because he's got so much stuff going on, I, <laughs> I love to do that. I right now I just want to master the craft of storyboarding, and then after that, you know, figure out what do you want to do from there. You know, what I yeah exactly. What do I want to do from there? Do I want to keep moving up because the next phase is director, and after that is supervising director, and and so right. I just to trying to take one thing at a time, and then let me just master storyboarding right now. Before, That's fantastic. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with us outside of the Watchtower. Uh, where can people find you out on Earth Prime? Um, online, Instagram, Matthias B. I think it's M A T T H I I A S B. Twitter, you can find me at Matthew B64. And yeah, just those two things. Fantastic. Thanks to everyone else for sharing some time with us. You can find us on Twitter at the YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on the yjfiles.tumblr.com, on our website, crashingthemode.com at our email address, whelmedpodcast at gmail.com. And now, as well, you can find us on YouTube, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoy our show, please consider sharing it with a friend. You can also support the show by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. The ratings help others find the show. And even though Season 3 is on its way, please continue to spread the word to friends and family about the series, hashtag ByYJComics on Comixology, and get yourself up to speed for the Season 3 premiere. And as always... Stay whelmed, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed.